Hey guys, what's up? Today we're gonna quickly go over my first impressions and thoughts of this little feller, the Sig Sauer P320 Compact. Almost said curious, the Compact, right? All right, let's get into it. All right, so before we really, really get into this, um, no, this would be cool if this was sponsored by somebody, but it's not. Uh, but before we really get into this, I'm just gonna tell you straight up, I don't know a terrible whole lot about this gun, and I'm about five years behind the curve um, as far as getting my hands on one of these. I've had absolutely zero desire to get one of these because in my mind, it's simply another striker fire pistol that has a high bore axis and has some little features about it that I will probably never use. Well, there's some other things on the market that I want to get my hands on. We'll get to that in another video another time if we ever get our hands on it. And in order to utilize those things, you need a P320. So I bit the bullet. Um, PSA actually had a really good deal. So I'm kind of glad I'm five years behind the curve because I got it cheaper than what they were paying for back then. Um, so I went ahead and got one and I got the compact. And it, see, there's several different models. I'm just kind of like how Glocks have the big size and the little size and the little bitty size and stuff. Um, the P320 is kind of the same way, right? And you guys know all this stuff. So I'm not going to bore you with all the details. If you want that information, just go Google p320 sizes or whatever i don't know that's what i had to do to figure it out but basically this one has standard capacity magazines whatever 15 rounds um i can't remember the barrel length exactly but it's three and something inches or something but it's basically in essence the closest model that they have to a glock 19 which i'm a big fan of just for an overall useful gun all that being said i don't actually own a glock 19 i have like several different variations that are basically that but slightly different name something else but anyway that's neither here nor there uh what we're gonna do today mainly is just shoot this guy a little bit i'm shooting on my iphone um because it's snowing and again i don't have wet gear or whatever for my camera so really we're just gonna shoot this a little bit i've been holding on to it for um i think well over a week um, two weeks, about, yeah, almost a couple weeks and I haven't been able to get out and shoot it and stuff. So I'm just going to shoot it, um, and just give my, give my initial thoughts and impressions on it. This is not scientific stuff, guys. This is just for funsies, kicks and giggles, not really even a review. This is just for fun. All right. So take this for that. It's just for fun. So let's get to shoot this thing real quick. Um, one thing I did do is I went ahead and I got some different magazines. It only came with two 15 round magazines, right? Um, I ordered, and if you know anything about these guns, they're stupid expensive magazines, like 45, 50 bucks. But I ordered some Pro Mag, hey, hey, uh, 17 round, uh, a couple of these. I loaded this guy up, so this has been loaded for about a week and a half or so. Um, and then I got the ETS 21 round magazine, and it's already kind of janky, if you ask me. Um, I'm not going to be like, it's super hard to load. Well, of course it's hard to load. You take a spring that big and cram it down. It's going to be kind of hard to load. But if you really get to shaking it, I don't know if it's going to do right now. Maybe it's stretched out a little bit. Um, but you really get to shaking this thing. The bullets just kind of jiggle around. It sounds like a pepper shaker thing. It's just, it's just kind of crazy. So I don't know how well it's going to feed and stuff. I don't have high expectations of the ETS mags. But the Pro mags... They look the same as everything else. So I'm, I expect that they should. But anyway, we don't have a terrible whole lot to shoot. But let's just shoot what we got. Let's take some first shots. We'll just shoot at some steel. Um, actually, I'm going to run over there and paint that steel real quick so that I can uh, see where I'm actually hitting. And we'll be right back. All right, so starting off with uh, the standard 15-round magazine. Um, and all we're shooting today is Tula 115, I think. Now let's just do this. Let's just, let's just see how it feels. Feelsies. Okay. Shouldn't feel bad. Locks open like it's supposed to. Okay. Try that 
Pro Mag 17 rounder. Okay. Oh, at first I thought it popped out a little bit. And like, yes, these do extend a little bit past the regular grip module thingy. So yeah, no, it didn't fall out prematurely. It did what it was supposed to do. And now for the special little flavor. I feel like this is the off flavored candy cane of, you know, Christmas is just kind of weird. Nobody knows what to do with it. Yep, there you go. Yep, there's the last round. Hey, held open on the last round. <laughs> hey, hey, what do you think about that? Yeah, and he does eject. That's one thing he does do. With the if it does have rounds in it, I did notice that if it has bullets in the magazine, it's kind of a little stiffer to push in and you have to pull it out. But when it's empty, it pops out. So that's not really a problem. So we're not really talking today about how well I shoot or the lack thereof or how great my groups are and stuff. I've just really wanted to get a little bit of a feel for it. Um, it may be not as snappy as I thought it was really going to be. Um, I hear a lot of people talk about the high bore axis and stuff. And this is not the first time that I've shot a P320. I shot one, what, two years back or something like that. Uh, some guy had one that was all kind of tricked out. Some guy, it was actually, um, Kemp, Kempter Customs, right? He, he makes my, uh, my steel targets. He makes, uh, the little logo thingies that go on the back of your, uh, trailer hitch cover things. He makes some knives. He actually makes some cool stuff. He's a pretty cool guy, but he's got a P320 with, I don't remember which optic he has on there, but he has one and I shot it and I wasn't overly impressed. I don't remember why. I really don't remember why. Um, maybe he had ETS mags and they were jamming up. I really don't remember, but I was just like, yeah, whatever. I have Glocks and I already am invested in the Glocks and the holsters and the magazines, so I'm not going to worry about it. So I'm not going to go full bore and just like, I'm going to carry this thing now. No, no. Um, I might at some point if I actually get comfortable enough with it. For what it's doing, it shoots relatively well. Um, the trigger is very interesting. It's a very, it's a very different trigger than a Glock. Um, I prefer Glock triggers. I think that they're nice. I think that you get a nice consistent pull and then it pops, right? You get a nice snap pop when you pull that trigger with the P320. You don't get that. It's a squishy mushy. And then it feels like a, a thunk. It feels like something broke on the inside. Like, oops, that's not supposed to happen. I mean, apparently that's just how it works, but you know, I hear a lot of people talk different ways about the triggers and stuff and eh, who cares? I don't know. When you actually get to shooting a gun, you don't feel like a thunk. You feel the gun go off. So it's not that big a deal. And then reset and everything. Everybody talks about that, but it is what it is. It's just, it's a reset. It's audible tactile and it's still there, right? Is it the same as Glock? No. Is it better, different? It's different, right? It's all, it's all different. So that's my first impressions. My first impressions are, I don't know what I think yet. Um, it shoots fine. It actually is very comfortable, right? At least to shoot and to hold. I don't even have a holster for it yet, so I don't know how to, you know, I'm not carrying it around or anything. Um, but that's just kind of my first impressions. I think it's going to be interesting. And especially if we can get our hands on the other thing that I want to use, that we use this, then it'll be really cool. That's the other thing is why I bought this, Right. And if that, if we ever get one of those, then, uh, you know, we'll figure that out and we'll let y'all know about it. But anyway, guys, um, that's pretty much it. What I ask you guys to do, I've never actually said it like that, but what would be interesting is if any of you actually own, actually own and actually shoot a P320. I've heard some different people talk about stuff and I don't need like my, my friends, sisters, boyfriends, uh, 
you know, cousin owns one and, and, and he shoots 800,000 rounds weekends. Like, I, okay, I don't care about that. But if you have one or you personally use them, right, even for work and stuff like that, what do you think about the P320, right? Is it is it better, worse, the same, just different than Glocks, right? What do you think about it? Because I'm grown up on Glocks, right? That's what I'm used to. I don't mind the grip angle. I don't mind all that stuff and things that everybody gripes and complains about. I don't care. I, I'm fine. I, it doesn't really phase me. I really don't. I really don't care. I do see how this is different, right? Like I said, grip angle, trigger, bore axis, all the different things. I see how it's different, right? Is it better or worse? Time will tell. But some of you out there have experience and have knowledge on on that exact thing. You have the time, so you can tell. So I do, I, I do look forward to reading your comments and stuff. If anybody has actually used these things. But either way, I'm just going to shut up now. All right, y'all be good to be safe. Appreciate you, and hopefully we will catch you in the next video. All right, and right before we go, I am going to say this. We do have Patreon, Teespring, Gunstreamer, um, Instagram, all those different things. Those links are down below. If you do want to show some love, if you don't want to support and stuff like that, um, we do have that kind of stuff, merch and things like that. This shirt is not from Teespring. It's from another site. If I got enough interest in it, I could get some. But if people want to support and by supporting and everybody ever says that, that's all they're asking for is money, right? And, and if you want to support and get something back, go buy some merch if you want to. You don't have to. It really is no skin off my nose. If you want to just jump on board and go to the Patreon and just give me money, then that's down there as well. And basically what we do over there, I try to give back to you in the form of an extra video a week. Um, more more off the cuff, not off the cuff, but just personalized-ish um, current up-to-date weekly updates. Basically, what are we working on? What did we actually work on last week? What are we going to be working on this week? And then you'll see some other projects and things that we're working on that we just don't put up here yet. But I think that's it. All right, y'all take care. I already said goodbye. And now I'm going to wrap things up and get covered up in snow.